Welcome back, folks. What we're going to do now today. We're going to we're going to embark on a, a three-part series, um, just having fun with the 555s. Now we're, we're initially going to just uh, build up some uh, stable circuits. They're oscillators, and we're going to build up a, a audio frequency one. Um, it's going to be around about 686 hertz nominal. We are going to have this potentiometer in here, which will allow us to change the frequency. Um, but if that potentiometer was not there, the frequency would be around about 686 hertz, given uh, these values here for R1, R2, and this capacitor here, C1. Um, and then we're also going to do a different version of it to flash an LED. So and given the values here, it's going to say the same, same resistor, different capacitor. And uh, that'll give us a, a frequency using this formula here of about 1.46 hertz. And um, the idea about this three-part series is that we're going to build up th those two circuits today, look at them working, have a look at the, the waveforms associated with them. The ones of importance, of course, across the capacitor and uh, the output. So that's, this is a, usually a, a triangle wave that uh, is represented by the charging, discharging of the capacitor. And the output here should be a, a pulse wave, uh, roughly square in this case, but it'll be a little bit asymmetrical. In part two, we're going to kind of combine the two circuits together um, to produce a fun little toy. So PCB way have offered to help us out with this project. They're going to provide us with some nice circuit boards. So when we get to part two of the video and uh, we combine the two circuits together, we're going to do a layout and uh, I'll take you through then ordering uh, PCBs from PCB way. It's so easy. So uh, anyway, let's get down to the lab and get started on this project. So one of the last projects I had done uh, at PCB way was uh, th this series of, of uh, boards that included um, a 8-bit computer based on the 6502, which I called the Vixen. And I also got uh, them to make up for me a series of, of prototype boards. So these are blank prototype boards. And you know, their stuff is really excellent. Like I've, I've got no complaints with it. I've used them for, for quite a while and I've been happy with their stuff uh, all along. So I'm really glad that they're going to help out with this project. Um, they're a good partner to have and a great place to get your PC boards made up. Here we got our power supply. I've, I've already set this up for, um, for nine volts and I've got the, the current set to about 200 milliamps. So we're, we're all set to go with that. We've got the oscilloscope ready to look at some of the waveforms. And here we have one of our breadboards with uh, the 555 already mounted in. Now, one of the first things you should do with these breadboards is connect the power strips together. So what they have on these boards is, is a first series of three, then the next series of three, and the next series of three are all separate just in case you wanted different voltages on them. For 99.9% .9 of what we're going to do, we want them all strapped together. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some of our wire and create little jumpers to jump between those. Yeah, you just want to measure it out. So you measure between the points that you want to create the jumper for and cut it off like this. Then strip the ends. So this here is number 20 wire. So you put it in the number 20 hole and it'll pop right off. Now we may want to trim it a little bit. Let's have a look and see. Yep, we do. We're a little bit more than we need here. So we've got those in place so all our bus bars are joined up and now we just have to start putting our parts in 555 is all ready to go so the next thing we're going to do is put in the bypass bypass capacitors 
He's just called call bypass capacitor because they, they bypass loading on the power supply. So they go directly between um, ground and VCC on the chip. Those happen to be pins one and pin eight on the 555. Now I like to keep all my parts trimmed. I mean, some people put them in in a kind of a haphazard manner and they leave the leads the full length. I don't like to do that. I like to trim the stuff up so that it fits nice and neat. And that way, I like to be able to um, uh, remove the chip if possible, if I have to. And this allows for that. It, so it doesn't, you're not putting parts directly over the chip, so the chip can be removed at any time. It also keeps everything nice and neat. We got those in the right. No, we do not. Let's get that one into the right hole. Okay. Now I'm just going to continue on with all the rest of the parts. Well, basically, we're going to be setting up this one. Now we're almost done, but before we put the potentiometer into the circuit board, I want to set this at approximately, it's a 10,000 ohm potentiometer as shown in the schematic. So B means it's linear and 10K. I want to set this up at about 6,600 ohms because um, that's the voltage that pin five is normally at. So that would be the that would be the nominal frequency. So we'll set that up for 6,600 ohms and plug it into place. So I need, it's gonna go in like this. So I need it between 6,600 ohms between here and here. Now we'll use the Kiwitz meter for this. We're at 4K. So we want to go the other way. 6,600 roughly. That's close enough. Now, hopefully we didn't uh, upset the adjustment on the potentiometer. So there we go. Now let's hook up the power. It's gonna use the leads that came with the power supply. They're not as nice as the other leads that we picked up but they did come with the power supply. So this side over here is ground, that side is positive. Connect that up like this. And there we have our 555 being an oscillator. Let's see what happens when we move this control. It should Theoretically, as I turn it up, the figure should go down. As I turn it down, the figure should go up. Let's see if I got this right. There we go. All right. I'm gonna, now I'm going to check out the waveforms with the oscilloscope. To see if we can see what this looks like. Okay, so let's look at the voltage across the capacitor here. All right. Probably amplify that a little bit. There we go. So we can see as the 
capacitor charging, discharging, charging, discharging. And you can see that change if I change the frequency here. You see the frequency of that rate charge. Now the reason the frequency is changing is we're lowering the threshold voltage. So this basically what this potentiometer does is, is lower the point at which this thing switches both on and off. So it begins to charge at a lower voltage, it begins to charge discharge at a higher voltage, but the gap between them gets shorter and shorter. And the time rate, the rate at which it charges, the rate at which it discharges remains the same. So that causes the frequency to increase or decrease as we move those points around. See how that works? And again, now we can look at the output going to the speaker. Just that hefty square wave there. Okay, let me set it up now. We'll set it up to flash an LED at a much, much lower frequency. But basically now we're, we're going to implement this. So we're going to take out the speaker and put in an LED. We're going to change this resistor here and we can also take out that output capacitor. This one here that was uh, going out to the speaker. And uh, we won't have to change the resistors, but we will have to change the timing capacitor. So we're going to go from 0.1 microfarads all the way up to 47 microfarads. And then if we do the math again, it turns out that we'll have approximately one and a half cycles per second. So let's have a look and see if that works out that way for us. There we go. I'd say that's roughly one and a half seconds, but then we're not at nominal voltage anymore. So we can turn that up and slow it right down if we want. Or we can speed it up. And there we go. They're the, they're the basic as stable multi vibrator circuits for the, the 555. One is a higher speed audio frequency, one is a much lower speed. It could be used as an indicator of some kind. Um, now, what I want to do in the next video is I want to put these two circuits together. And that's what the final project will be, will be these two circuits put together. And then we'll get PCB Way to create the PCB for us and we'll solder all that up. Our little project will be completed in a, in a very nice and professional manner on a beautiful PCB board. So thanks for joining me today and come back for part two of the project. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you then.